All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the uh, the channel here and we're back in my garage and as you can tell, I actually have a little bit more room in here. So I recently took in the uh, the Chevelle project car that I'll probably not touch for another couple of years, maybe another year or two, whatever. Uh, I took that car and put it in a storage unit just for the time being, kind of free up some space in here so that way with now with having four motorcycles in this garage, uh, the likelihood of doing anything in here maintenance wise was virtually impossible. We're right now into the kind of like the rainy season, the April showers bring maize flowers or something, whatever they call it. So trying to uh, have time to actually work on stuff without having to push everything out in the driveway, it's kind of irritating. So I moved the car out of here, put it away, opened up the garage for a lot more space. Got motorcycles parked over here. Obviously, you know, bike here, bike on the lift, uh, toolbox and everything. And I have a new workbench and a few other things coming. They go up against that wall, so they should be here, I think, on Wednesday. I literally just did all this in the past two days. So uh, I'm going to set up a little work area over there with my vice and everything from the back shop. And then maybe paint the walls and do some other things. I don't know. Kind of clean this place up a little bit. Make it look better for you guys. So when you're at home and you're watching us working on something, it doesn't look as, uh, I don't know, whatever it is. I've I, I watched a lot of videos on YouTube and there's some shops and, and places that I love. I'm, I see it and man, it's like so clean and so just whatever. And then I enjoy the videos where you could just tell that the shop has a lot of soul in it and a lot of um, history or whatever, kind of like going to Andy's shop. Andy's shop's got stuff everywhere. He knows where everything is at at all times, but it looks like a chaos. I love both of those. So <clears throat> I'm gonna kind of keep messing with it, make this a little bit more uh, kind of YouTube friendly and just better content for you guys. But either way, that's not what today's episode's about. Today's episode is we're gonna get to working on the motorcycles. The blue one in particular, this is the bike that uh, I'm riding up to the Club Style Illinois season kickoff. So I need to get this bike road ready. I got a few things to do to it, uh, being one to be able to haul some storage on it. So uh, we're gonna do that. But well, let me give you a quick update on the motorcycles, just in case if anybody's wondering what's going on. Give you guys a quick little rundown of what we got in the garage right now, and then we'll uh, we'll get to working on Old Blue over here. Peaches and Cream, still pretty much in the same state that it was. Um, the windshield that is currently on it, obviously there's the stock one. That windshield does belong on this bike, but I have it over here for the time being. So uh, before I take my trip, obviously I'll switch that out. Um, I got a backrest on order. I uh, still got to put the mufflers on it. And I'm still kind of figuring out where I want to be suspension wise, you know, what shocks and, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So still working on that. The uh, wife's bike, it's perfect. Um, maybe still kind of contemplating power coating the wheels, gloss black, but I don't really see us putting a lot more money or parts at this motorcycle because uh, it doesn't really need it. And to be honest with you, I, I'm just, I love the bike the way it is. She's been kind of toying with the idea of maybe trading it in towards the new Tobacco Road. I don't know. Something about this color to me, I just love it, man. And and um, I'd hate to see her get rid of it. But it's her bike, and if she chooses to get something different, then that's up to her. I'm not going to argue with it. But it's a beautiful bike. It's it's, it's ready for the uh, the trips that are coming up this week, this year. Yeah, so that's pretty much it on that bike. Over here with my 87 Sport, I've kind of been playing with the, the headlight, you know, and some other things. And I'm just trying to figure out what I want to do with this bike. I still haven't fully committed to building it, selling it. I don't know. I, now that I have this and then this, I kind of want a third bike to be completely different. So I actually might leave this bike lowered, still put mags on it, but give it a more of a pro street look. Um, I do have some mid controls and a correct kickstand and a few other things that we are gonna be putting on here as well as that stock headlight. So I, I do plan on having a video of this bike kind of getting it in stages, but as far as going super crazy on it, I don't know where I'm gonna stop. Either way, here we are We're on Old Faithful, Old Blue. Um, I do have four tubes on the way, some OEM Harley Davidson convertible fork tubes. They're 25 and 3 8 inches long. And then with the one inch, the two inch, but the one inch, extensions from till death i think will put us just a little shorter than where we're at now um so i'll be able to run this flush and have almost the same amount of height which will actually be probably perfect so yeah on today's episode this is what we're going to be doing we're going to be tackling these uh fxrp saddlebags onto my 1991 fxrs so for those that don't know the fxrp saddlebags basically refer to as the cop saddlebags um, there's a lot of companies out there that do make some knockoffs. There's also companies out there like FXR Division that make a beautiful set of repops. 
unfortunately it wasn't in the budget for me to get the fxr divisions uh not saying that they're just over expensive for no reason they're they're definitely worth the money i just didn't have the budget for it with obviously these other motorcycles so what i have here is a company called villain to hero it's kind of a they've been around for a while so a lot of guys have used these and seem to have good results there's a few things that right out of the box i did not like about them the uh welds aren't the greatest um it did come like a flat gray or a flat black as far as the powder coat went so i've had these gloss black to make them look a little better and then the tabs are very weird like where the saddlebag sits on the actual um, bars they got tabs for the bolts to go through and some of the tabs are just bent instead of doing like a nice kind of step bracket before you weld it on they just bent it up in the jig and it doesn't sit nice and flush so little things like that's kind of irritating we're also going to be installing a genuine harley davidson backrest on this bike i i searched for a while found this for those that don't know um an early sportster early dyna and fxr all share the same 6.75 with outside to outside um, spread as obviously the fxr like i just said so i found this was actually listed as a sportster on ebay and then of course your side plates have to be specific to an fxr so these came off the yellow bike i have another set of these that were on this bike when i bought it but they were a little rougher than these so these are a little cleaner i'm gonna put these on they just kind of mount behind your fender struts so they'll mount back there we'll get those on the bike and then this is gonna be a little surprise so i'll go over this and what this is all about did some research kind of found some liners that kind of worked fxr division again does make liners and for someone that's on a budget like myself because i'm not rich by no means i mean i, I i'm motorcycle rich right now but i'm not money rich so um, i found something that would work plus it's from the boys at saddleman Obviously, none of this stuff is sponsored stuff. So this is all I paid out of my pocket, just retail prices for all these things. And uh, I'm going to get them on the bike, give you my honest opinion, because I'm not held to any standard of sponsors or whatever. Either way, we're going to get these things on the bike. So I'm going to get you guys set up, and we're going to start taking this bike apart and going over step by step what needs to be done to uh, install them. All right, so for this job, it's, you can pretty much do it with all your just your standard hand tools. Um, we got an 11 16 socket ratchet we have a three quarter inch wrench for your foot pegs and we have a 9 16 to go on the back side of this now not sure what size hardware is on your bike there but for mine uh this is a quarter 5 16 allen which will take uh both or this bolt out we don't need to take this one out but to take the uh the aft bolt out we'll need uh this 5 16 there so we're, we're gonna start with it we're gonna go ahead and remove the foot pegs uh, super simple, we'll get you down here. So like I said, it's pretty simple. You just have a, I don't know if you can see it through the gap, but you have a, a three quarter nut on the back side. So what we'll do is we'll just get a wrench on there. We'll kind of break it loose a little bit and then we can use the actual uh, peg itself to kind of just loosen it up. Kind of a pain with this belt. The other side will be easier. I'm gonna switch it back and forth without scarring up my, there we go. Now here's another thing with this Villain to Hero kit. It did not come with any hardware, so I'm pretty sure I'm probably gonna need a longer one of these. So we're gonna get everything mocked up on here and then I'm gonna run to the local hardware store and for anything else that I may or may not need, including those spacers that I feel like I'm gonna need on the backside, we're gonna grab those while we're at the store and then finish this up. So got the peg off, next thing you get, we need a, we, oh, by the way, you need to have your bike supported because you will have to kind of remove the shock. Uh, the brackets do go behind here so to safely do this go ahead and support the bike so i do have my little lift underneath it just to keep the bike from you know falling but uh, as far as these rear shocks go you got a 11 16 on the outside if you still have standard bolts and then it's just a 9 16 uh it's actually a bolt so this is technically a nut it's a nut with a sleeve on it and then the bolts on the inside but um, for the sake of not confusing everybody a 9 16 nut on the inside and then the bolt on the outside Like I said, that's what the uh, inside looks like. All right, so there's our shock. Another thing I'm considering with this bracket is right now, you see my shock doesn't have any pressure on it. You remember how I cut down? If you go back to the video when I kind of installed the back end of the bike, I had Andy mill down a set of these. 
spacers for me and it's it's got the right amount of you know distance off of here on the bike so i want to put the bracket on behind here just straight up and it let it go out this far if it zoomed in right or i can reinstall this short on the inside and then with the thickness of the actual mount itself it should bring it back to this so we'll see when we get there when i start mocking it all up next up we're gonna get this aft uh, finish strip bolt out. Same thing, just 916 on the back end. This one actually is a nut on the back end. I said earlier I wouldn't have to remove this, and I just remembered I do have to remove this to get the uh, new sissy bar plates back on. So you will have to kind of, yeah, yeah, I'll have to take that back out. Just know once you pull this out, it will make the uh, cover loose. So try to avoid letting it just fall and hit the ground. All right, so now that I got it to this point, I got all the hardware loose. I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of the saddlebags. I'm gonna go ahead and mock it up. Like I said, the bag brackets, as you see, there's three brackets all together. There's the two on the top and there's one towards the bottom. They're gonna line up behind the shock, this rear mount, not behind it, but just behind the shock, in front of this rear mount, and then down to here. And I don't know where those spacers are meant to go. The size of the hole and everything, it makes me think that those are for the foot pegs. Then it makes me wonder what do they have going on back here because the mounts that they have are perfectly flat. So I feel like it needs to have some sort of space in back here somehow. So let's grab one of these bags. Let's mock it up on the bike and see how it lines up. It goes without saying that there's a left and a right. Just, just saying. Actually, I'm gonna temporarily reinstall this just to keep that from moving a lot. So after sweating and trying to figure this out, I think I came up with a solution as to uh, make this work. And keep in mind, I should have listened to Andy. Well, Andy told me after the fact, after I sent these off the powder, but he did suggest if you're going to uh, put these particular ones on, you do need to kind of test fit them because it is a little tight in that front mount. And I'll show you why here in a second, but let me get this tightened up. Let me get what I have here tightened up, and then uh, I'll kind of show you what I did, and hopefully, hopefully it makes sense. And we'll properly torque all this down after the fact. I just wanted to get it in here tight, semi mocked up, so I can tell if everything's going to work out. I have to go get another bolt for here. It's a fine thread. I don't, this is a coarse thread obviously and it needs to go the other way so the peg mount can mount. Like I said, when I was looking at all this, I knew this piece is tapered in and you're not gonna put this flat piece of steel against this directly. What I ended up doing and it worked out perfectly, I removed the washer that was actually on the backside of this stud and I just, since this is so thick right here, it can act as the washer for uh, this end of the stud. So, I removed the washer so that way it doesn't hurt the length of this, but I flipped these spacers around along with the inside of this, and then that extra thin spacer that I had, I used it back here in the back, and I don't know if you can see it, but I used it back there. It actually bottoms out inside of the strut, and then it gives me a little shoulder for this to lay against flat. 
So now with this tightened up, that's all nice and flat. And then I measured from the actual fender. Oh, and I got the sissy bar mounts on there. But anyways, uh, I measured from the fender to the edge here and here to get it to make sure it was lined up. So there's a four inch gap between there and the bags are still loose. You can kind of slide them in and out. But once I get the bag, I, I had it set to where the gap was nice and even through here. So I got my nice even four inch gap all the way through here. Then I have a nice gap through here. And once I get everything tightened up and get the sissy bar on and remove these, I should have some nice, super solid bags. You definitely have to remove this. You gotta remove this. You gotta remove this. So if you're running the Villain to Heroes, it doesn't come with anything but these spacers. And this is where you're gonna need the spacer. So I'm gonna have to go to a hardware store. I'm gonna have to get a longer bolt here. So I need to measure how much space is here to here and then add about another half inch so we can screw this in. And then uh, luckily I had some extra chrome longer ones because the ones that were in there are too short, but I had an extra set of these. So uh, I still have my nice chrome matching pieces there. I do need a chrome washer. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna finish buttoning this side up and then I'm gonna put it on a time lapse and let you actually see me working on the other side. All right, we'll get you set up on the other side and get it knocked out. before you put the sissy bar on and tighten it all the way down, or before you tighten up the side plates for the sissy bar, make sure you put the sissy bar in, kind of temp install it, because I guess it was just off just a little bit. So I had to give it a couple little love taps with a dead blow, um, but it's in there and secured. So I told you at the end of the video that I would show you kind of like a little surprise kind of thing that I did some research. I measured these bags out and figured out exactly what the dimensions are. I kind of searched online, searched online. And I came up with this. So this, is a set of Saddleman liners for a, uh, I believe it's called like a GS 1200 or something like that, a BMW adventure bike. So the, I think it was like 2006 to 2014, it came with two bags. One bag is significantly wider than the other bag. So on those bikes, uh, even though the saddlebags look the same, there's actually one saddlebag that's a lot narrower, explains why this one's narrower. but. This big bag, if you run it just the way it comes, um, it actually expands. So you have a zipper right here. It's hard to do this with one hand, but it has a zipper right here that you can actually expand this. If you run it just the way it comes, with and all that, we'll get it inside this saddle bag. But mine is like, you know, a little inch gap here. You can actually expand this to make it fit, but the width on this one's almost perfect, as you can see. And then the height, once you shut it with the height of this, it's perfect. So this bag actually works great. Zipped up, not fully you know, expanded, works perfect in this bag. And it gives you enough room to maybe put like, uh, you know, you can just put some quick access stuff here that doesn't necessarily have to go inside the bag. So you can have a pair of flip flops or, you know, whatever else you want in here. So there's the one bag. Now the shorter bag, if you were to leave it compressed and not expand it, which I have it uh, expanded. So this is the, ex actually no, expand it. So even with the expansion size, you see I about, have about an inch and a half or so here, that same distance here, it's the same height. You can actually have enough room for like your tool roll or some rain gear or something else. And then you got a smaller bag that could have uh, uh, maybe like your toiletries, you know, things like that that you can just quickly grab. Um, whatever in here and then you have this bag for your clothes so on my east coast trip i'm going to have all this set up but what i'm going to do 
So I'm gonna reach out to Salomon and see if they'll sell the kit with two of these. If, if you got both, I think this is the left side, but if you got both left side bags, it'd be almost perfect for this minus, like I said, the one little inch, but that could actually be a good thing because like I said, you can get some quick access stuff in here, whether it's a, you know, an extra shoe in each side, you know, you can slip a, uh, you know, like a van slip on in here and there and tool bag or whatever. But I don't hate having the two different sizes because like I said, I'm going to bring some tools with me. I'll have an extra pair of shoes, rain gear, whatever could sit tucked in real tight there. And then when I get to a hotel, you know, I still have this bag that I can pull out and use. So, so like I said, this is the Saddleman Saddlebag Liners for like a 2006 um, to 2000. I know it's the 2014. I don't remember what year, but I'll get a part number and I'll leave the part number right here. So this is the part number that I found with these. And like I said, I'm going to holler at Chris and see if there's a chance that they can offer both these bags because so this is actually pretty good size i mean for the type of road trips you do on an fxr this is actually a pretty good size to hold a lot of stuff more than enough for me i usually only pair pack you know even if i'm on the road for a week i might just bring two pair of pants a lot of t-shirts and stuff like that so that'll hold all that and then having the sissy bar now i can actually put a luggage piece here strapped against this and that can hold you know even more stuff so just wanted to show you guys that. I thought that was super cool. Hopefully it helps some of you guys out that's been looking for some saddlebag liners. And uh, again, it gives a good shout out to Saddleman, which they did supply us with the seat for this bike. So I like kind of supporting the, uh, the guys over there and what they do. So either way, we're gonna wrap this video up. I appreciate you guys tagging along and hopefully the next time you see me in the garage, we'll have the workbench and it'll be a little more organized and I don't know what bike will work on though. Maybe the FXRS again, because I did order a new set of fork tubes. I have the uh, correct fork tubes coming. Probably reintroduce the race tech stuff again and hopefully see if that fixes our uh, clunking issue. Until the next video, you guys take care and uh, we'll see you then. Peace.